Hello and welcome to Noel's Retro Lab. Today we're going to do something a little different. Some of you have told me that you enjoy the videos and you want to attempt to do similar repairs to your own computers, but you lack the soldering skills. So I thought, let's learn the basics of soldering. So I hope that by watching the video, you gain the confidence to do those repairs yourself. Let's get on with it. Let's start by having a look at the basic tools you'll need for soldering. The very first thing is some kind of soldering station like this one. I much prefer the temperature adjustable ones like this one. That way you can set your desired temperature for regular stuff and then you can increase the temperature if you really need to for you know, working in a particular tough ground plane or something. If it's not adjustable, then it's probably too hot for regular use. There are plenty of inexpensive soldering stations like this. I think you can find some reasonable ones starting around 30 euros. So that's that's pretty good. The other thing I like about this one is that it includes some kind of, um, what is that, like brass or iron spongy thing for cleaning the tip like that. And then also all of them include this, it's a sponge. So you wet it ahead of time to get the tip really nice and shiny. The next most important thing is the tip of the soldering iron. I don't know if I'll be able to focus on this one. There you go. So this is not a needle tip of any kind. It's what they call a chisel tip. So it's rather thick at the, um, at the end. And you'll see why this is really useful because you'll be able to make a lot more contact with the components and transfer a lot more heat than if it was just a uh, very narrow end. So in particular, this one is, I don't know, it's like maybe like three millimeters long uh, wide. Uh, this is pretty much my go-to tip for everything. Um, I rarely put other tips. I mean, if I'm going to be doing SMD soldering, then I use a different tip. But for 99% of the things, I use this one. Here are some of the other tips that you may have available. So you can see there's some even wider chisel ones, maybe for working in bigger components. These are some of the narrow, like more needle-like points. It's really for some very specific things. But those are, unfortunately, these are the ones that come by default with a lot of soldering iron. You don't want to be using that as a default. This is, it's more like this kind that you want to be using. The final tool that you'll need is some actual solder. There's some things to look out for. For example, you definitely want uh, something that is leaded. So this one in particular, so this one has 63% tin and 37% lead. There's some unleaded ones in there. Don't use those. They don't melt as well. They don't, you know, they don't work as well. This works way better. You probably also want to have some that have some um, flux inside, some rosin flux. It helps a lot with just the general feel melting the, the solder, attaching itself to the components. It, it makes it things much, much better. You also want to make sure you get the right size of the solder. So this one in particular is um, it's 0.8 millimeters or zero point, so 0 0.031 inches. To me, this is an ideal size uh, for this kind of uh, through hole component soldering. You can get something smaller like 0.5 millimeters, anything smaller than that and it starts, you, know, you end, up, end up using a lot of length for you know, just it's it's more uncomfortable but i wouldn't want to go as thick as one millimeter um maybe one is okay but certainly no bigger than one it's not just enough to take off those check boxes like say okay 63 37 point eight millimeters some rust and flux okay we're good to go the brand is something that matters a lot so this caster is a fantastic brand there are some other good brands, like for example, MG Chemicals is another really good brand. Not as very similar, 6337 composition. This one is a little um, thinner, 
but yeah it's it's fantastic as well in contrast to something like this this is a cheap you know chinese no brand solder and it looks like it's similar it's uh 63 10 37 lead uh, i think the 1.2 percent also refers to some flux inside this is much thinner but wow the difference this doesn't melt nearly as well as that i need to crank up the temperature significantly to melt this it doesn't have the same finish i mean this is this is pretty much garbage i mean i have it here because i bought it a long time ago it's i guess it's an emergency backup but i will never use this and yeah this was a lot cheaper but this is the one place where i i definitely say it pays off to buy a good brand solder you know you can you can you can go a little cheaper on those guys and buy a 30 dollar station and that's probably fine but this makes a big difference one more thing about these the same way that i'm telling you to avoid the unleaded ones also avoid the ones that claim that are a no clean solder again it's kind of like the unleaded ones it's supposedly some minor benefit but in the end they don't work as well and cleaning them is not a big deal we're going to see later how to do that so definitely get regular solder and avoid the no clean one so to start with we want to have a clean tip first we clean it on what once once it reaches the temperature if it doesn't reach the temperature then try to do this so whatever solder is left in here which we will if we do things right we will have some we first clean it on this on this brush metal brush and then to get it really clean we pass it on the wet sponge and it should be really clean so there you go it's very, very clean and shiny. That's what we want. So to start with, let's solder some simple components like this resistor. All I've done is bent it a little bit and put it through some holes. This is just a test pad. So we start with the very clean tip. And what we want to do is heat up the area where the component is. We want to heat up both the lead of the component and the eyelet that it's going through. We could just try touching, putting the tip to the lead and the eyelet. This is, by the way, is why we're using a chisel tip uh, for the iron, because it transfers a lot more heat than it would a pointy one. But this is not good enough. There is, you know, there's not that much contact, even with a chisel tip, there isn't that much contact. So we are not able to heat up things enough. So what we want to do is we want to have a drop of solder on the tip itself. So after it's really clean, we take a little bit of solder and we put it directly on the tip, just like that. This is the, the, the reason for this is not to transfer this solder to the, the joint in here. This is just so the heat transfers more effectively. So we do this. And now we let it sit there for about a second or two to heat it up. And now we touch the eyelet and the component with some solder, just like that. Now we wait another second, so it goes through and we remove it, just like that. Now actually, yeah, just like that. We end up with a nice joint like that. So we'll do the same thing here. We can reuse the solder that is left on the tip. Usually you'll be able to do several of them with the solder in, in the tip. Eventually you'll notice that, oh, it's not transferring heat as much. So at that point you should clean the tip because you'll have some flux in the tip. You'll see that it gets dirty and, and it doesn't transfer heat as well. But probably with this, actually, yeah, just actually like that. You can, now that it's been sitting here for a little while, you see how it's getting a little brown. So that's not very good for transferring heat. So I'm gonna quickly pass it through the metal brush and the sponge. It's all shiny again. And I put a little drop, boom, just like that. And now I try to make contact with both the eyelet and the component. And again, I put the solder itself on, the, try to touch the eyelet and not the um, iron tip, just like that. See the first time I did put enough, I put a little bit more, hold it for a second or two, and then remove this. And there we have 
two very nice and shiny joints. What I would do in a situation like this is afterwards, I cut the leads because they're huge. The important thing is to cut them above the joint. So don't cut it right there because you may stress the joint. Just do it just a little above like so. See, we leave a little bit in there. And same thing with that one, like that. One thing that you can see this um, this joint is a great joint, apart from being shiny and, and being shaped correctly, is that when you flip it, you see that the solder went through to the other side. So it's making very good contact with the component. If we didn't let it sit long enough, uh, maybe this would look a little, a little empty and there would be no solder there. So this is what you want to try to get, something like that. So what if we want to do a whole integrated circuit, or you know, in this case, just a socket for an integrated circuit? So the principle is the same. We put it in the right place, and we flip it. Now, here's one of the differences. You can't as easily leave it in place. If I just flip it over and let go, it falls down. So you need to hold it in place a little bit. Um, some people will put masking tape or some kind of putty. Um, I just try to hold it with my hand, maybe the same hand that has the, um, the solder. I hold it like that while I'm trying to aim this in one direction, like that. Just enough to do one. So even if it's not very good, just to melt a little bit in there. Oh, you see, I don't have enough. I don't have solder here, so it's not heating up the pad like I just showed you. Okay. So just like that, and you should in a corner first. It's hard to see where the corner is. There you go, just a little bit, enough to hold it in place. And then I'll do the other corner. Just right there. Okay. So I do the opposing corners just to have it in place. Then I can check, is it is it in place? Yeah, it looks good, yeah. If not, at this point, it's very easy to touch, to heat up one of those ends while I, on the other side, I push with my finger and that brings it in place. Same thing with this. Yeah, okay, that was perfect. So now that it's solidly in place, we just do the same thing that we did for those, for every single one of those bits. So let's start with a clean tip, put a drop of solder, and then we do the same thing. Warm it up, put enough solder, wait a second, boom. Next. Just like that. If it's not enough, you can always add a little bit more. If you put too much, you can always go back and take a little bit away. Just like that. So now, for example, if I try to put this solder too quickly, it's not going to be at the right temperature, it's not going to melt. Look, I'm going to bring this here and here, and it's not melting. Now it melts. So you just need to be a little patient. You need to first put it there, leave it a second or two, and then it just melts right when you touch it, just like that. Once you're done, you need to clean this, because remember, this is no clean flux. So if you look at it closely, you see a little bit of stuff. You see that it's not completely clean in between. Apparently some of that can be um, corrosive if you leave it there a long time. So for that we'll just use some isopropyl alcohol with a brush. So I like to keep some alcohol in a little container like this and you pour it over. This is difficult because all holes. And then with a brush like this or maybe an old toothbrush, you just scrub it a little bit more. Now this will dissolve the flux, but right now we're just smearing it. So once it's kind of dissolved and 
spread all over. We take a rag, we put it on top, and do it again. And notice that it's soaking up some of the alcohol with the flotsam. So once you do that, it should be now really clean. Let's see if we can get the right angle. Yeah, there you go. It's totally clean and shiny now without any bumps or imperfections. So yeah, that's what you're shooting for when you're doing soldering of through hole components. So there's actually one more tool that I recommend to solder safely, and that's some way to remove the smoke that is coming into your face. You really don't want to breathe that smoke as much as possible because it has flux in it and that's pretty poisonous. So what I do personally is I have a small fan mounted directly in this bookcase. And this particular one is USB rechargeable, so that's pretty handy. And when I turn this on, it's a pretty weak fan, but I have it pointed down into my work area. And that's just good enough to make that smoke go sideways instead of going up into my face. So this is really handy. A probably better way than this is to have an actual extractor. So it would be another fan, probably much larger and more powerful one than this one, pointing away from your work area. So it actually sucks that smoke into the fan and then it passes it through some kind of carbon filter. So remove this, those substances from the air. Uh, you can actually buy those already pre-made or you can make those as a project. If you have a pretty well ventilated room and you're not soldering all day long, this is probably good enough. Um, it certainly works well for me. Let's run a test. I'm going to solder this without the fan and uh, pay attention to the smoke that comes up and where it goes. So even just thinning this should be pretty obvious. Yeah. And then... I think it's pretty clear that it's generating a fair amount of smoke and it's all going up. So now I'm going to turn on the fan and I'll do the same thing. I'll tin this. Yeah, see how it goes very much away from my face. And same thing with this. So yeah, this little fan is great to get the smoke off your face. So we're done soldering what we needed to do. What do we do now? Do we just put it back and turn it off? No, if you do that, you're going to be potentially damaging the tip. What you should do to the tip is tin it. So like with most things, first thing you want to clean it. So we clean it there a little bit and then with a sponge. So it's totally shiny. There you go, we want like that. We put a drop of solder on one side, one drop of solder on the other side, just like that. And now we can store it and turn it off. That makes sure the tip stays protected. It doesn't oxidize any more than it has to. And it can keep there for a long time. Next time we want to work, we turn it on. We wait until the heat comes, the temperature comes to the right uh, amount, and then we clean it completely and start from scratch. It should go without saying, but never, ever, ever <laughs> try to clean this with sandpaper. That's the worst thing you can do. You will damage the head. Um, so if for some reason you haven't kept it completely clean all the time and you see some dark color that starts developing some dark areas, those dark areas are not going to conduct as well. And you can tell that the solder is not gonna stick to them as well. If that happens, just scrub it, clean it with a sponge, tin it, do that multiple times with the flux in the solder and the cleaning after you know, two, three, four, five times, it's going to go away and you're gonna get a totally clean tip. That's, that's what you wanna do. Never try to scrub it in any, any other way. Finally, another thing quite important after you're done soldering is to wash your hands well. I know it sounds a little ridiculous, but We've been using unleaded um, solder and it has flux as well. So those are both toxic substances. Uh, so the last thing you want to do after touching this, after touching the components, after using the alcohol and maybe having diluted flux in your fingers is, for example, going and eating something and getting that in your system. So it's not super urgent. It's not like if you touch this, something bad is going to happen. But once you're done, 
go ahead and you know wash your hands well with uh, soap. So there you have it. That should be about everything you need to know to solder through hull components. And really anybody following the instructions in the video with the minimum equipment should be able to do just about any repairs that we talked about. So I hope you found the video useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of similar videos in the future. Until next video, see you then.